We are back for another real estate happy hour. What's up, David? How you doing, buddy? Good, man. Man, got a little live. Live. Live, Man, live. you saw them. Yeah, saw them this weekend. Uh, last weekend, yes. Absolutely. Who are they with? FBA. Counting Crows? Counting Crows. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. Because, you know, I went to this, uh, uh, obviously, probably 20 years ago, I saw this band. Counting Crows, you're talking about? No, live. live. Oh, live. man, they were hot in like 94, 93. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're out there at Oak Mountain Amphitheater, and I'm thinking, man, how... How does this feel? Life has turned around for you guys, right? Obviously. For who? Them? For everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody. But. Absolutely. I mean, they used to sell places out. Big crowds. People going crazy. Now, sun's not even down. Right. Place isn't sold out. I mean, there's still people <laughs> coming in. And, and, and they're, they're performing still. You it's, know, 20 hey, years later. Unbelievable. That live album was one of the best albums. I remember of '94. They still, they still gotta, still gotta sell some tickets. Man, though, right? they play. Let me guess. Mr. Jones was it the uh, no, closing song? No, Mr. Jones wasn't there. And I tell you, the, the the lead singer, County Crows, man, he got on a couple of tangents, talking about uh, telling stories, man. And then this one guy behind us was making fun of him. It was kind of funny. Listen, I, I I had a good time. It was it was it was fun. They they did the songs a little bit differently. I didn't follow along as. You know, well, maybe you're a little older. Plan. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, we're, every time I come into your office, though, uh, one of your awesome co-workers teaches us new words. And I mean, every time, I mean, it's like, man, I feel like I'm 82 years old. Right. I mean, bad gum. What did we learn today? The word salty is yeah. like two girls. That like have a bad a, attitude. Yeah. Or you're upset about something. Yeah, well, you're upset that the other girl looks prettier than you. Yeah. I or, mean. Or maybe like it, when you come in the office think, and before you get your cup of coffee, some of those people are yeah. kind of salty. They're salty, right? Yeah. But, but she really said it was like a girl on like girl says, I'm jealous that you look good. Yeah. Now you're salty. So, so she's salty. They're I'm using stuff, you. man. Apple today. Man, did you see it? Apple hits one trillion dollar market cap. One trillion market cap on Apple. That's a big deal. Big uh, deal. Was it two hundred bucks a share? Um, I so mean, that's exciting. Nuts. Well, what's really exciting was the other day when I told my wife that in her four oh one K I had bought this is in 2009, $4,000 worth of Apple stock. That Then I did the calculator that Money Magazine, or one of those guys had, it would be worth about $68,000 today. But it's not, right? But it's not. Because you sold so it. So I sold it for $400 gain. And, but then, then, of course, somebody said, well, put into that little calculator what Amazon would have been. That $4,000 in, like, January of 2009... Hundred and twenty thousand dollars in Amazon, unbelievable. I mean, and as much money as my wife spends at Amazon, well, I do too. So yeah. I, I, I blame everything on got her. Amazon boxes everywhere. I mean, dang Man, we got we got Rachel Kelly, Valerie Morgan, Lindsay, Cassie, Brady Eldridge. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Nick Limburg. In. Nick Limburg. Hey, the pride of Arkansas, Pig Suey. Big Pig Suey fan, man. He he is an awesome dude out there. There we go. Valerie's gonna be upset. I showed her the uh, the seven parenting. Laws. We're going to save those, Valerie. And look who just came in. Mike Slocum, the hammer. But we're good. But I'll yep. share them with you. She already read them. We well, talked about them. Uh, in addition to Lance Bass, Mike Slocum's probably the other one that is probably going to be putting an offer on the Brady Bunch house. The Brady Bunch house selling for one point eight million. Is that one point right? <laughs> one point eight million. And Lance Bass is the only one that's come forward. Uh, and we know Slocum will probably put his name in just to have it. And you know what's really funny is they had an interview with him, and they're like, "So uh, why this house?" He's like. I got the money. Let's do it. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, I mean, just an iconic house, I guess, uh, right? It's a uh, collector's piece, right? Well, you know, you know what's interesting is that what I was reading said the Brady Bunch house is in the top five most photographed houses in America. Number one, of course, is the White House. Yeah. Uh, Then the Full House house, which I thought that was surprising. I don't know if you ever go down that long, windy road out in San Francisco, which is ridiculous drive. Drove it once. That was dumb. Because hmm. uh, I'm not a good driver anyway. And, yeah, sure enough, man, people were lined up. And everybody's pushing out. Well, hey, I got to get the same shot as they do in the opening credits there. Yeah. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway. So, well, what we else have, we got? Uh, listen, this week we have uh, CrossFit Games. Uh -huh. I know, you know, th this CrossFit and uh, uh, Iron Tribe and things like that. This uh, uh, intense workout. <laughs> Has right up been, my alley. Has been a big deal the last 10 years, right? Well, it has been. And I'm going to do a 12 ounce curl in honor of that. There you go. We got a little uh, mango wheat, blue moon, 
but mango weed in today. But I know uh, Michelle Legal. Michelle uh, Legal. Big, man, she's probably going to the fitness. Man, that girl is fit. I'm telling you. Uh, Arnett yes, is, yes, yes, no. Yeah. And Mandy, Mandy Gunn, good to see you. Thanks for joining. But, the, yeah, the CrossFit Games this weekend, man. I watched a little bit of the first round yesterday. They had a marathon row, three hours on a row machine. Are you kidding me? Right now, I wouldn't last. I mean, it's three minutes. ridiculous. Matt Fraser is the number one two-time defending champion for the men. <laughs> uh, Tia Toomey is uh, the defending champion for the women. And I think Catherine McElroy just joined us. Hey, Catherine, I th she's a big CrossFitter too. I think. Man, uh, I'm telling you, I bet she's in the finals today. They're they're taking a day off because yesterday was so grueling, and then they'll pick it back up. Uh, Tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and finish up Sunday. Should be fun. It's amazing that we've turned working out to where you're excited about watching this. Is this like ESPN? Man, no, actually. What, what is this like? It's, uh, it's not even covered. It's on the CBS uh, Sports app. Um, <laughs> Slocum. <laughs> Slocum says CrossFit's oh, terrible bad man. form. And David Upchurch, the pride of Charlotte. Good to see you, David. <laughs> Couldn't make it in a real sport. Slocum, that's... Uh, Man, some of these dudes are crazy big, and and I know the uh, the steroids and stuff has been been popular. Oh, they already back in there. Well, they had one guy that finished third last year that got busted doing steroids, but uh, I tell you, it's a uh, it's entertaining. I like watching. Hey, it. well, I mean, I just never thought in a million years that we would be. I mean, you're not the only one. Obviously, they don't just broadcast. Although I will say, in college, Delon Anthony, how are you, man? Hope you're doing well. Um. I just never thought, like, World's Strongest Man competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that used to be awesome. I mean, watching, what's his name from Auburn? I forget his name. That dude would be pulling a uh, a, a oh, tractor trailer or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, mean, I, well, they had they had these these guys yesterday. They were doing this total, uh, they had back squats, 500-pound back squat, and then 200-pound strict press, which is just straight up pushing it over your shoulders, and then a 500-plus-pound deadlift. Wow, I mean, man. Guys are crazy, doing a ton of weight. That's nuts. Well, hey, uh, t talk to us about a little bit about yeah, Bill Kazmaier. That there you go, Slocum, Slocum. Yeah. So so here's the deal. Um, I wanted to talk about a few stocks, right? Mix those in real quick. And and one of them, you know, that just can't get out of its own way is Wells Fargo. They paid what two billion dollars today? $2 I mean, billion dollars two billion in, and, and, in old mortgages. And this is the same company that Clark Howard keeps saying is a criminal enterprise masquerading as a bank. Now, that's not my words, that's Clark Howard's. But the problem is, every month we're hearing of another settlement. How much money do these guys have? Two billion with a B. Man, two billion with a B. Today, they've been paying uh, fees for credit cards. They've been, they paid fees for uh, auto insurance, I think, that they were, they were selling incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> it's I nice. mean, it's, it, it, all year. The funny thing, though, that blew me away today, looking at this today, the stock for the company for Wells Fargo amidst all the problems they've had this year. As bad as it gets. Down 3%. As bad, I mean, I've not seen a company just just settling lawsuits left and right. They're down 3%. I think their dividend is about 3%. So you're breaking even. I mean. It's nuts. It is the nuttiest thing. And this market's been nuts. They man. are literally treading through mud. <laughs> hey, or, but or, or worse. Well, and, well, my favorite is they, they don't lose any money. Have you seen the new commercial? They're wanting you to skip everything in between. We're going back to our roots. Oh, yeah. Redefined. Established <laughs> yeah. in yeah. Like 1908. Re Re-established in 2018. Disregard everything yeah. between 1850 and now. Now, we ripped you off for 110 years. <laughs> we won't do it again because it's a new day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brand new day. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Slocum. Slocum, even for you, that would have been a good one. Uh, you wouldn't have to be have part of a jet-sharing membership. You'd have owned a fleet of jets with that oh, settlement. Oh, man. Uh, man, a couple of things I noticed today. Uh, GoPro, strangely yeah. enough, stock has never... Uh, well, I'm sorry. Since they, they had the big run-up, um, stock has not done well. Finally, they, they didn't lose as much money, so they did well today. Uh, Tesla's up today. Tesla, I mean, wow. But you talk about a guy taking a hit. Elon Musk. Yeah, I mean, man, man. I looked at the roller coaster of that stock over the last six months. I think it's been, uh, you know, there's there's fifty to seventy dollar swings in the stock. And the stock today, I think, is three hundred forty bucks. So big swings. Since price two hundred seventy, three ten, you know, two eighty, three seventy. I mean, hey, hey, what have we been saying every week? We've been counting one stock since it was about a hundred and three dollars. 
nailed earnings today. Royal Caribbean. One of Collier's favorites. Boop, right on up. At, at, I mean, what? Up 4%. 4% after hours. After hours. Beautiful. Killed earnings. Uh, of course, WWE continues. And then uh, a lot of these dividend payers are doing well right now. Um, yeah. So, you know, just look into all those kind of stocks because I think it'll really help. But, yeah, and if I buy it, stay out of it. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, but I tell you, some of these uh, closed-in funds, those type things, really good. So probably a good day in your 401k or your uh, – uh, retire any of your retirement accounts today. Uh, so, yeah, no, no sign of it. You know no. what's really interesting is that if you think about Royal Caribbean, that's discretionary spending. That means people are, you know, they have extra money. Uh, absolutely, you know, they're they're out there spending it, and so that's real important. Like Michael Bruno, he hey, he has the oh. money. He wants to spend it. Oh, Bruno is always cruising, but. But this is what uh, this is what the Fed's been trying to do. This is what the government's been trying to do. Uh, this is what happens when rates are held down. Borrowing rates have been held down, which in uh, right. increases the the money cash flow to consumers. Right, so they have excess cash and they have money to spend, and that stimulates the economy. When we and we've been seeing that in a lot of the financial news lately is people you have certain factions that say oh well wages haven't grown other people say they have well guess what i hate to tell you but if you're not doing a good job at work your wage ain't ever gonna grow so That's true i mean you got a tax cut for sure on from the withholdings yeah things like that but my god if you don't do a good job the world just don't just come to you Right. And uh, I think that's one of the problems. We're seeing a lot of people with, with this debate about whether folk, wages are going up, wages are going down, whatever. But look, wages are going up at least by inflation. Yeah, they have to. They have to. But I want to welcome in Shannon uh, Harper, Rachel Kelly back. She's been like on and off a couple times. Chris Jones, Carrie Ballinger. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, so on the heels of the economy doing great, it's even going to do, do better for two people. How do you throw the brakes on it? You put Tiger and Phil against each other. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. We are going to have a little Tiger and Phil showdown in November. This is going to be winner takes all. Man, I couldn't believe it when I saw the headline. Oh, this is where it takes me back to the old Skins game. If anybody remember, I remember growing up as a kid, and on Thanksgiving weekend, you'd watch a Skins game. It'd be four golfers against each other. Yeah. But, man, I remember thinking, man, ooh, he's going to get $100,000. Man, they're going to be mic'd up. So you can hear him talking trash, um, which is going to be really entertaining, I'm sure. It's going to be, I know, y'all sit down for this one. It's going to be a shocker of where it's going to be held. Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Of course. It'll be better. So on. they're going to be mic'd up. They're going to be talking trash. $10 million purse goes to the winner. Yeah. They I have are a feeling be... most women are going to be pulling for Phil. What do you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know, they I know gonna, my wife will. They are going to make a mint, though, between the, the TV ratings they got to. Unbelievable. They Unbelievable. To. Uh, hey, Rachel Kelly, you, you've come back for the 19th time. We know you love it, so there you go. That's how we get all of our, that's how we get all of our views. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Rachel this girl Kelly. just keeps yeah. coming right yeah. back. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, the buyers. Where things are about to get tougher. Man. Um, Home buyers, that is. Yeah. What's going on? Buyers have had a tough year already. You know, rates jumped up from... Uh, end of last year, we were high threes, right? 4%. Worst case scenario, interest rate on a 30-year fixed. This year, we have moved all the way up to really close to 5%. Some people are at 5, uh, 4.5 for most of the year, 4.75 for a lot of people. So we've been in this range of, of 4.625, 4.875, you know, kind of hovering around 4.75. Uh, absolutely. And and that's a three-quarter of a point move in interest rate. Now, every house they go and look at has 10 contracts on it. They do right now. Yeah. And I've been working with sellers now that go, why is my house not selling? Hey, it's overpriced. It's two words. It's overpriced. It's overpriced to be it, and, one word. And but, I'm telling you, you know, these things have started happening. You know, obviously the interest rates have been down and haven't had this kind of a move in 10 years. Um, we haven't seen this kind of competition over houses, I don't think, in a long time. No, not in with, a with real six, long time. Eight, 10, 14 contracts on a house. So, we, we go through a long period where it's all buyer's market. We've had, what, six to eight months of a seller's market. Absolutely. Some people right now are anticipating that everything's about to change. So, they're saying nationally that home prices 
topped out in March. Yeah, what we we looked at these numbers from that you know once you you brought this and one thing we found was that Birmingham has stayed. We haven't swung. We never swung with the pendulum like right. yeah. like San Francisco, Phoenix, even the big city. Nashville even swung bigger. Atlanta, Miami, those those cities. But. Does it affect us? Of course it does. But you didn't yeah. lose eighty percent of your home value. Right. You lost thirty percent of your home's value. And so what we're saying though right now is that we're about to get into a situation where I don't want to call it a crisis, but it's gonna be tough. Yeah. But and and, and Birmingham is not uh abnormal or atypical, right? We're still going to feel the ebbs and flows of the real estate market, the national real estate market, we're just not going to hit the extremes. We're not going to hit the extreme highs or the extreme lows. Absolutely. But we're still going to see the same trends. So what they're saying is that prices topped out, inventory bottomed out. Okay. That's so now, bottomed out for sure. So now inventory is coming back up. Prices are coming down. So they're saying sellers, if you're thinking about selling your house at any time in the near future, now's the time to do it. It is because we're finding that what, what's happened is we have all this demand out there, very high demand. We still do. But what's happening is they're starting to get into a, back into a routine with school coming up and all that, and they're going to have to go somewhere. And what happens when you go somewhere? You create a commitment, whether it be a lease, moving in with somebody. I mean, moving is costly. It is. And, and I think you know another problem that sellers are, might have with, with some of these things you're talking about, some of these buyers might be tired of playing this game. And oh, they might yeah, say, I've, I've had enough. I'm staying where I'm at. We're getting them back into school. Uh, you know, we'll wait until the spring. We'll, we'll wait, get through the holidays. Especially women that if, if women, we know women, Tara Lindbergh, the other pride of Arkansas is here. Well, the, the better half of the two, the better looking <laughs> half of those two. Uh, but no, women are driving that buying decision and they're not going to deal with it right now when school's starting, going into the holidays. They don't want to disrupt the family. And so, what we're going to find, I think, is, is inventory is continuing to shrink because I don't see any motivator to push to somebody sell. out of the market. Well, yeah. Why would you if you have nowhere to go? Yeah. Now, the other thing that, that people are talking about is uh, don't be mistaken. If you're looking to sell your house here into this market, don't look back at March and say, well, I'm going to get 10 offers. The market is super hot. I can put it up. The house down the street, add 5000 to it, and I'll just list it there. That's not going to happen. If you, if, you, if you keep with that mentality and you don't change what the market's going on right now, your house is going to sit. And what happens then? Well, it, it sits and, and you're wondering why you haven't sold, but everybody has. Then you'll blame everybody but yourself, which really is a, if you're selling your home and it doesn't sell in this market, look square in the eye at you and know that you didn't price it right or you didn't have it in the right condition. Because there is no reason that you should sit on the market in this market, especially when you got competent representation. I, I just don't see how you could in a, an environment where high demand. Yeah, and I think I think knowing this stuff uh -huh. as a seller They're is, on the beach. Yes, I think I think knowing this stuff as a seller is important. Um, you gotta have good representation, but you gotta come to the market at the right price and, and be expecting this stuff. Don't don't think about six, eight months ago when the market how the market was. Well and that's where I think a lot of agents that don't have a what, how would I say this? Don't have a lot of experience? We'll start throwing out. They need to know the market right now. We don't need, you don't need an agent or a mortgage lender that's going to regurgitate something that they've read from six months ago as a sales point for today. Just like the stock market is in a different position from six months ago, different things happen. Market shifts, right? You look pre-tax cuts to mm -hmm. post-tax cuts. I mean, that happened one day. The next day, we were in a totally different yeah. interest rate environment and market environment. So I, I think if you're, if you're looking to sell, now's the time to get back in. And quite frankly, I've always been a contrarian of saying, get into the market while everybody else is out. So if everybody leaves, you stay in. Yeah. You should drive interest rate. I mean, not interest rate. You should drive a lot of buyers to your, to your home, and uh, ultimately, you'll sell fast. Because yeah. you really, truly, right now, stuff's either selling really, really fast or it's sitting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I think it's I think it's an interesting time. We're, we're going to see you know how this plays out over the next uh, next year or so, really, because we're going to roll into the end of the year, the fall season, the holiday season, and then roll right back into um, spring of nineteen, and then 
you know, we're about 12 months away from what some people are calling for a recession. So that'll be really interesting. In well, that's right. I, you know, and I think that in the long run, we're going to be okay. Prices, especially here in Birmingham, if you're not in one of the major, but some of the major metropolitan cities, Phoenix, full revival of, of the real estate market and all that. So it's going to be different. This 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 downturn, this recession, whatever, is going to be different. We're going to be more yeah, insulated. Yeah, it's going to be different. And I think, I think um, you, you know, as you see these interest rates go up, when we get into a recessionary period, if that's uh, 12, 18 months from now, we'll probably then have some room for rates to come down a little bit to help the real estate market. Okay, so obviously interest rates are going to play in the real estate market. Regardless of what's going on in the economy, people making less money, people losing jobs, doesn't matter if, you know, if there's, if there's still affordability. We can still create and help affordability with those rates coming down. Well, and one of the big unique things that we're noticing, and I know you are as well, is there are situations where with this low supply, high demand economy of real, in real estate that we're talking about, appraisers are still being appraisers. And what we're finding that you still got to price according. You can't just go, oh my gosh, I have a $200,000 house. I'm gonna put 250 on the house. I think I can get somebody to buy it. Great, I hope you get somebody to actually put an offer because it's not closing. If it's got a more yeah, and I and I have to say I know some people will disagree with this, but I do have to commend the uh, real estate appraisal community. Absolutely, I think, I think the real estate appraisers um, have done a a good job, and I think the, the putting the third party in there, the the appraisal management company, to where the loan officers aren't directly you know putting pressure on. I think they've done well not to get carried away with values and just run things up because there's been. But a, there have been times where I got, I got to tell you, I mean, it, there are, just like there are good agents and good lenders. I mean, Tom Horn was sitting here a few weeks ago saying there are good appraisers and there's bad appraisers, you know, and I think sometimes the bank's got to be a little bit more understanding when we can provide real evidence. Oh, true. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. it's not because they're fallible just like the rest of us. Yeah. Um, because we, one of the biggest things we get Matter of fact, you and I had a customer uh, yesterday asking about that. And, and the question became, they saw active properties or they saw, oh, that house down the street sold for X. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to have context for that. You can't blindly just start pointing out every house you, you thought. Because quite frankly, most people are lying when they tell you how much their house sold for. They don't tell you the 10000 that they gave away as closing costs. But yeah. Um, yeah, and some of those situations, you know, some of those situations, it is it is arguable. You know, you can't look at the appraisal and say, you know, and I, I don't feel like my house is comparable comparable to that house, um, or it is more comparable to one that's sold higher. So, and it might be true. Uh, same customer had had the feeling that said, look, I could probably go out and sell my house for X, but I'm only getting an appraisal here. That might be true. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as we head in, and and, and we're seeing, you know. Uh, uh, just a, a movement in this market, which is good. Uh, uh, we've sounded kind of negative on the market, but it's not really negative. It's a uh, just a shift. You know, I, I think it's I think it's not. I don't think it's negative. I think it's interesting. I just love to see it play out because things had to change, right? We, you know, interest rates didn't move. We were from from four percent. That the average over the last ten years for interest rates four and a half percent. Right now, we're just uh, we're a little bit above four and a half percent. So for ten years, and we went from you know, maybe I think three and a quarter, three and a half was about about the low for the 30-year fixed. A few people might have gotten in low, lower than that. But that's not a big swing for interest rates over a 10-year period. 1%. Well, that's right. So not things had to change. And I think loans are better. The loans are putting together are better. Uh, absolutely. So we don't have the crazy loans. I, I, I kind of, I like it. I like what's going on. Well, and the other thing to keep in mind is is the factor that new construction has into it. And what's happened over the last eight years or so is that new construction started chasing the money. What happened, land went up, land values went up. So they had to acquire property at a much higher price. So then what do they have to do? They have to build bigger and better housing, right? They have to go into certain areas. And so one, at least in our area, what we're finding is that, that there's not a lot, they've kind of forgotten about that first time home buyer, mm -hmm. right? So your inventory is limited if that's going to be lost. I mean, you have builders, national builders like D.R. Horton that just kind of ditch that market and we're getting into the three four hundred thousand dollar housing market. Yeah, and, uh, I, and so and I think once once this does turn, once it cycles through, and we do, let's say we do have a recession in eighteen months, I think you're still going to have a strong real estate market that is able. You, you, we're still able to have, uh, you know, 
we're not we're not going to take the kind of hits because the loans are going to be a lot better than than we've had in the past. We won't have the foreclosure issues. We're still going to have the same old traditional reasons why people buy and sell houses. Right? Their families are getting bigger, moving, they're downsizing. They're moving. Uh, buying the first home, first time home buyers. I mean, or you promised your wife six years ago you would move, yeah. but you're paying too much down yeah. on your mortgage. Yeah, I don't know who that would be. That would be this guy. But <laughs> one day we'll move, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> well, hey, uh, as I, long as that doesn't cut into the cruise budget. No, no, can't cut into the cruise budget. No but, way. No, 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 no. Or the drink package, or the gratuities covered. All that mess. Trust. Um, Travis Mitchell just joined us. Carrie Fye Sumner. Well, we're just wrapping up. I appreciate you guys checking in. Yep. The um, new the new Facebook page already has stuff up there. Yep. We haven't totally done a full release on because we're trying to tweak some things. Uh, so look for that the Real Estate Happy Hour page. Yep. Um, Going big time. Got a. We got our all our new gear is just getting together. Uh, not new, using it yet, but we got a new camera. New camera looks kind of fancy. Yeah. Well, there it is. Yeah. Uh, it's a Mevo camera. We'll be able to simulcast to YouTube. So you guys will all be able to say, I, I used to see those guys back when they were still. Yeah, we were. As David said, our new tagline is, we're kind of a big deal. <laughs> Let's see if that sticks. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see y'all next Thursday, five, 4 o'clock. Yes. 5 o'clock Eastern time. That's right. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right. We'll see, see y'all next, next week. week. Have a good week. See you later.